What's up, y'all? What's going on? It's Remsen Noir from Tribe by Noir. And I want to talk to you guys about skinny fat, the perplexing, paradoxical issue of being skinny fat, where you are both skinny and fat at the same time. Now, if you, if you identify with this, you know this drives you nuts, right? If you've got skinny arms, skinny legs, and you retain an excessive amount of body fat around the torso, you know what I'm talking about, right? The, the bubble gut, right, that round soft belly, love handles, back fat, fellas, the early stages of budding man boobs, but then you're skinny at the same time, right? And so it's a weird issue because you do one of two things and this traps you. Now, those two things are either you try to cut weight and you just focus on cutting weight or you focus on trying to gain muscle mass. Now, it's better to focus on gaining muscle mass, but a lot of people don't really do this right. So you probably know what I'm talking about. Maybe you've tried to cut weight. So you cut your calories, your food intake, and you started doing more cardio, right? And this worked in the sense where you actually lost weight. But it doesn't really make you look any better. It doesn't really improve your physique much. Because even though the number dropped on the scale, you still, you just, you're skinnier fat, right? It's just a different version of skinny fat. And so this probably drove you nuts, right, if you've, if you've done this. And so what happens is, from underfeeding the body, cutting the calories, overtraining and doing all this cardio, you end up just losing whatever muscle mass you had in the first place. So then you see that and you go, okay, I'm gonna go the other way. So then you start picking up your calories, increasing your protein intake, and lifting the weights, getting in the training volume, lifting heavy, just going all out on the weight floor. And you end up gaining some muscle, you gain a little bit of muscle on the arms, a little bit of muscle on the legs. But then that body fat around the torso is still there. And so what happens is you potentially increase the body fat around the torso along with increasing muscle mass on the arms and legs. So then, <laughs> this also yields a different version of skinny fat. You're just skinny fat with bigger arms and legs. Now, people who've done this strategy for a longer period of time, that's the guy in the gym where he's got the round, soft belly and the big arms, <laughs> right? I'm sure you've seen that at some point in time in your gym. So, if the solution is not cutting, or bulking, what is the solution? The solution, quite simply put, is focusing on food quality rather than food quantity, right? And when you focus on quality rather than quantity, this results in improved digestive health, what I like to refer to as gut health, right? Your gut is your digestive system. So if you're retaining a lot of body fat around the torso and it's extremely difficult for you to get rid of this body fat, that is an indication of poor digestive health, right? So typically, whatever you are consuming on a daily basis is either improving your gut health or wrecking your gut health. So you'll hear on YouTube and various other outlets of social media, you'll see the fitness expert who says, cut out the junk, the soft drinks, and the cakes and cookies, and start eating real food, better food choices. I mean, it sounds great, it's kind of vague, right? So how do we quantify, how do we actually qualify a food as being a health food, right? A better choice, a higher quality food. Right? Because then, hey, if all you got to do is cut out cakes and cookies, then I guess everything else is great for your digestive health, right? Not exactly the case. So 
the way I qualify a better food choice is by these three things, right? This, these three things on this checklist. Number one is going to be antioxidants. Number two is going to be micronutrients, preferably in abundance. And then number three is going to be fiber, both soluble and insoluble fiber. Antioxidants basically protect and defend your cells against oxidation and free radicals that occur in the body over time, right? And so oxidation, in a nutshell, creates damage and ultimately death to your cells, right? If you wanted a better picture of what oxidation looks like, oxidation looks like rust on metal, <clears throat> right? So just to give you an idea, this stuff is corrosive, right? And so these free radicals, they erode your cells over time, causing, causing inflammation, impacting your immune system negatively. And this is going to slow down your rate of recovery. This is going to slow down the new growth and regeneration of muscle tissue, skin tissue, all that type of stuff, right? This impacts your sleep quality, your digestive quality. Um, it even leads to allergies and different things like that. So this is why it is extremely important to have antioxidants in your diet on a consistent basis. So now when I'm talking about micronutrients, I'm talking about all of the vitamins and minerals that should be in the human diet. So we're talking about vitamin B, C, A, E, D, K, magnesium, manganese, chromium, uh, all of this type of stuff, right? All these things you need in the human diet. And so a lot of the times when people are deficient in these things, they have health issues because of it. A primary, a primary example that leads to excessive weight gain is insulin resistance, which is often a result of you being deficient in magnesium and chromium, which are things that directly regulate insulin sensitivity and blood sugar levels. Right, so that's just a quick example there. The antioxidants that I mentioned before, the vitamin C, that is essential to the digestive process in your stomach. This maintains the lining in your stomach and helps with the absorption and digestion of foods in your stomach. Vitamin C is also essential to the production of collagen, which is directly related to your skin health. So I wrote an article on this actually, and I'll put a link to that in the description. But I, I mean, if I was to go into all of the different details of why you need all these things, this video would be like an hour long. So I'll spare you all the details on that. If you really want to know the details, read the article in the description. Let's get into a conversation about fiber to end the final three, the three on the checklist. Now, fiber is broken down into two categories for the most part, soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Now, soluble fiber dissolves in water. So it dissolves in the gut, right? It creates like a gel-like substance. So this protects your stomach lining, this regulates your blood sugar levels, this regulates your, your cholesterol levels, this regulates your appetite, helps to keep you satiated for a longer period of time, which prevents you from binge eating and developing ultimately bad eating habits in general, right? So the regulating of the blood sugar is super important because without that fiber, you just have all the sugar from the food you ate dumped right into your bloodstream pretty much all at once. And this creates a huge spike in insulin followed by a huge crash, which leads to fatigue and lethargia and hunger and ultimately bad eating habits because then you're seeking out quick sugar sources to then spike your energy back up, okay? And so, then there is the regulation of your appetite, right? The fiber keeps you fuller for longer, which means that you're not feeling hungry all the time and overeating, right? So this is why soluble fiber is so important. And then you have insoluble fiber, which regulates your feces, right? So it adds bulk to your doo-doo. So this is, this is how you prevent constipation and diarrhea and different things like that. Insoluble fiber also and it's getting dark out here, but basically insoluble fiber also feeds your good gut bacteria, right? Because insoluble fiber has this thing called prebiotics, which feed the good gut flora in your digestive system. 
and your good gut flora, which is known as probiotics, is like the maintenance crew of your digestive system. All right, so here's the deal, right? Meat, dairy, and eggs don't really check all three of these boxes, right? Mostly, meat, dairy, and eggs is lacking in the antioxidant department, big time. There's no vitamin C, there's no beta carotene or any of those other carotenoids, right? Micronutrients is there, but not really in the way that you need it where it can properly be absorbed into the body, right? Especially if you have gut health issues. And then there's no fiber, so that's also not helping with the stabilizing of the blood sugar levels and the cholesterol and the appetite and all that type of stuff. So you're not getting all of those benefits from meat, dairy, and eggs. And on top of that, meat, dairy, and eggs are highly acidic foods, which feed bad bacteria and parasites and all of that type of stuff. Right? So if you've ever heard of candida and, the, and what excessive levels of candida in your gut do to your body, then you know this ain't good stuff. Right? So this is why the Western diet is just out here killing Americans, right? killing people in Western society. It's because the whole food plant-based diet is where it's at, especially if you want to make a serious transformation in your body and fix your gut health issues. Now, as far as a plant-based diet goes, you're like, all right, well, how exactly do I put together a plant-based diet? What should I be eating? Well, let's start with the five categories of food in a plant-based diet, right? And that is going to be fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts and seeds, and legumes, right? Those five things. And so basically when you're putting your meals together, what you want to do is you want to mix calorically dense plant-based foods with nutrient dense plant-based foods. So an example of that would be mixing nuts and fruit or mixing uh, vegetables and fruit with legumes and grains, right? So those are just a, a few examples there, right? So therefore, you're not under eating and then you're also getting the maximum amount of antioxidants and micronutrients as well as fiber necessary in order to fix your gut health issues. Now the final diet tip that I'm gonna leave you with is nutrient tracking, right? And this is a thing that hardly anyone does. Right? I ask people all the time, how many calories do you get on average? They don't know. How many grams of protein do you get on average? They don't know. What about carbs or fat? How much calcium are you getting on average? Nobody knows. Right? And so when you actually start tracking your numbers, that's where you get to see where you're excelling in your diet and where you're deficient, right? And you can start filling those holes, but you won't know where your holes are if you're not tracking, right? So there's two apps that I suggest to actually get this done. And that is, you can either use MyFitnessPal, which is a pretty simple and free app that you can use on any mobile device to track your food. And then there is Chronometer, that's way more in depth and it gives you amino profiles and omega-3 and six ratios and all of that type of stuff. It's way more detailed. It's not free, it's like two or three dollars or something like that. And, and, and that's not really much money at all, especially if you're serious about really nailing this diet thing and getting this together, right? So you can choose either one. You can go the free route with MyFitnessPal or Chronometer. The choice is yours. But whatever you do, make sure that you're tracking so that you know your numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, this information is huge. All right, so definitely capitalize on this. Whether you're vegan, vegetarian, or you're on an omnivorous diet, this information is important to know. Because I don't hear a whole lot of fitness professionals talking about gut health. They usually talk about calories in and calories out and macros and protein surpluses and calorie surpluses. But it's way more in depth than that, okay? Gotta fix the gut health issues. Once you start targeting foods and know what foods to eat that will fix and help you fix your gut health, then you can start getting into the protein surplus and getting into the calorie surplus, right? So when you're targeting a calorie surplus, you really only need 100 to 200 calories over your calorie maintenance, right? And that's, a, that's another topic for another day, right? As far as protein and all that type of stuff. But after you've nailed the diet, then all you need to do is get in the gym and get on a program that is geared toward physique development. Now, I offer that.
personally so you can contact me or go to tribebynoir.com and sign up and get access to all of those programs, right? But whatever you decide to do, you want to keep in mind that this program should specialize in hypertrophy and resistance training. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my time. I will catch you in the next video.